so when we thought about this problem uh, we thought that okay we have the expertise uh, in evs we have the expertise of running a fleet so we thought let us use this knowledge and let us transform tourism through our smart evs so that is how float was born so float is something uh, which is, which is just a feeling which we wanted to give to the end audience uh, by float what we mean is you can float through um, uh, float through whenever you are on a vacation so it is like just just moving around uh, with perhaps absolute freedom uh, by freedom what i mean is let's say when we are traveling right now uh, in in the hospitality sector what happens is we are only dependent on the hotel travel desk to arrange for our last mile commute what happens is whenever we have to go to sightseeing we go to the hotel travel desk and ask them to arrange for a, a let's say a cab or something and the options which they give us is let's say an 8000 rupee package for a 3 to 4 hour uh, commute or maybe we try to find something on our own and we get a package of around 4000 rupees for 2 to 3 hours of sightseeing and what happens is uh, usually these guys uh, the the drivers they take us only to those locations where they have a tie up with so they'll say ki okay sir aap yahan pe ja ke khana khaiye yahan pe bahut acha khana milta hai but actually the reality is something different the reality is that probably that guy is getting commission from that particular hotel and that is the reason he is recommending you that hotel so in a way you are getting manipulated like let's say if you want to explore any uh, new destination uh, something which you have seen on instagram or uh, any and any travel blogs if you want to go to that particular location so maybe if the driver does not want to take you to that location so you'll say that yaar wahan pe kuch nahi hai there is nothing to see it is just a, a misconception that it is a good location in reality there is nothing so in a way he is doing all these things to manipulate the end audience so that is something which um, i think uh, everyone uh, sitting here does not deserve that because everyone has an aspiration to go on a vacation like some like so you people might have planned a vacation few people might be actively planning a vacation so we actually did not wanted uh, the audience to be manipulated when they are uh, traveling so in order to solve that problem uh, we started the float uh, we conceptualized float let's say a year back we have been constantly working on all the unit economics of the businesses and uh, there are a lot of value chains which are involved even though it looks like a very simple concept to understand but the value chains involved are very very high like there are a lot of value chains in terms of maintenance in terms of roadside assistance in terms of insurance in terms of uh, finding the right hotel partner so there are a lot of elements mm-hmm. which are involved uh, which we were trying to crack for the past one year um then what we did is we did a pilot uh, after doing a pilot after getting all the data consolidated all the data verified rectified that is when we are uh, ready to launch this product uh, called as float so i would love to uh, take you guys through the presentation very quickly without wasting any more time so uh, let me just introduce uh, you about ebuygo and what we have been doing for the past 4 years just to establish some credibility so ebuygo uh, is a brand which is into uh, which is into the rental segment and we have been catering to as i mentioned earlier to all the big players in the b2b segment uh, we have a global presence in four countries we have we have created our own uh, in house robust fourth generation vehicle a vehicle which uh, we have already sold 25000 units in the european market so it is a eu designed i mean european certified designed which is now manufactured in india so it is a very unique combination and it is a pr- perfect product market fit so we already have a pending po of uh, let's say 20000 vehicles and we have already sold 25 and very soon we are also starting our operations in oman so there we have a pending po of 15000 vehicles so that shows that the vehicle uh, which we have created is very strong and very robust which will be using uh, in the hospitality segment as well Uh, apart from that the most important factor in um, running a ev fleet i feel is the uh, is the in house technology because i think technology is something which is very important for any business uh, in terms of scalability so we have our in house product uh, which is the iot device which is the saas product which uh, which which eventually acts as a virtual marketplace for this entire business to happen apart from that our core team uh, there are players from like the all the um, team members are uh, seasoned entrepreneurs they have already created their own businesses they have worked with big companies like tesla um, lafar johnson's control so all these companies uh, they have been working for the past 10 15 years uh, one of our co-founder is was working with johnson's control for 17 years in us he left everything he came back to india 
and that is how we founded eFICO. Uh, again, we have experience of uh, handling more than 2,500 vehicles in our fleet, uh, which is huge in terms of EV fleet. Uh, in terms of a normal fleet, probably the number might look small, but handling 2,500 in EV fleet is a huge number. Uh, we have more than 1,000 satisfied customers uh, in terms of B2B customers. I'm talking by one customer, I mean, it is Amazon or it might be a Zomato. So that means one customer. So in that way, we have uh, catered to more than 1,000 B2B customers across the world. Moving on to the next part, uh, just to give you a very short introduction about the team, uh, the founder, Dr. Irfan Khan, is a very renowned name uh, in, in the EV segment. He's been uh, working in the EV industry for the past uh, 10 years now. Um, 10 years, I'm saying purely because uh, before 10 years, probably the EV industry did not exist. Uh, so he has played a crucial role in forming the Delhi EV policy. He works very closely with uh, Nitin Gadgari ji in formulating the Delhi EV policy. Apart from that, he has also played a vital role in formulating the Nepal EV policy. Uh, again, so he's a very renowned name when it comes to uh, all the EV uh, policies and all the EV infrastructure development. Again, the co-founder of the company is Hari Kiran. He is uh, someone who has been taking care of the operations. Uh, he's someone who's, who has worked with companies like Bounce before, and uh, now he's been actively handling the entire operations of eBiko, both in uh, both the India operations as well as the abroad operations. Kedar Suman, uh, I was talking about, he, is, he was working with John's control for the past 17 years, and uh, he left everything, came back to India, and formulated the company. Melin Garud is a practicing CA for past 25 years. Uh, now he is one of our co-founders. Then we also have with us Mr. Chandramoli, who is a chief business officer. Uh, he's an ex-Franchise India employee. Again, so he's been, he was working with Franchise India for the past seven to eight years. And now uh, he's acting as a chief business officer at Ebiko. We also have Somaraju, uh, who was VP operations. He was working with KPIT. And then there is me. I'm heading this business. Uh, I was previously working with Club Mahindra and Taj. So again, we also have a very, very strong advisory team. Uh, when I talk about Ivor Briganza, Ivor Briganza is someone who is a um, personal assistant and personal advisor of the Highness of Oman. So he is, uh, he's an advisor uh, with eBike for the past two years and he brings us a lot of B2B and government types and uh, that is how we are also expanding in Oman. Uh, again, Deepak Gaisas is also one of our found, uh, one of our advisory members. Uh, he was a founder of iFlex. He created iFlex and uh, sold it to Oracle for $1 billion. And now he's on our advisory board. And we've been very uh, fortunate enough to be backed by some seasoned entrepreneurs and uh, serial investors like Rohit Chanana, Amit Singhal. They are very renowned name when it comes to uh, the startup culture. So moving on to the next part is the current problems. So the current problems uh, which I was talking about in the EV industry is that uh, again we have we have uh, broadly captured all the elements here, which is uh, the the expensive uh, fuel prices, which which eventually uh, results in a very ridiculously uh, price cap fares. Uh, the, the biggest aspect which is missing there is a lack of personal mobility. So by personal mobility, what we mean is that well, like in our home. Uh, we always have a vehicle which is parked right in outside our house that the only reason of having a personal mobility is that gives us a freedom to travel anywhere and everywhere we want at any time uh, uh, at any time which we want to travel so that is something which is lacking in the hospitality sector um, the, one of the major problem right now is uh, the environment uh, all the tourist places the flora and fauna of the tourist places is getting depleted very quickly. And in a way, we are losing the importance of the tourist destinations purely because a lot of people are going and um, spoiling the environment. And the major contributor is the CO2 emission, which happens due to travel. So that is something which we are trying to capture here. Um, again, when we use those cabs, which are uh, which are in an unregulated, uh, unregulated industry, what happens is, uh, the, it is not clean, basically, uh, especially after COVID, everyone has become very, very, very skeptical about the cleanliness and the hygiene factor because uh, because we usually travel with our families. So their safety is something which is very important. So that, that is something which is currently missing in the EV uh, ecosystem right now. Apart from that, the vehicles are not smart. So they are not connected with any IoT devices or that, that major element. So with technology is growing, but still we are uh, we are we are very much reliant, reliant on all the manual infrastructure. So that is why we wanted to um, solve this problem by bringing in the fourth generation vehicle, which is very robust, which is made in India, which is of European standards, 
Um, this vehicles do not require a lot of maintenance. It does not require petrol. Uh, the major aspect which we want to capture and uh, which will be one of our USPs is the hygiene factor, which would be very well maintained. Um, apart from that, these vehicles are smart and connected vehicles. Just to give you one instance and example for relating it with the audience is that, let's say if you're using this vehicle and you go to a remote location and if the vehicle breaks down and you do not have a mobile connectivity to inform to the hotel that, okay, you're stuck somewhere, uh, this vehicle will ping on its own. The vehicle has an IoT device. By ping, what I mean is the vehicle will send command to uh, the nearest base saying that the, the vehicle has broken down and you will get a help in even in, at any uh, isolated location. The, the, at, you'll get a, uh, you'll receive a help in around 30, 35 minutes. So that is something which is uh, with use of technology is something which we are using because uh, whenever we are traveling, usually the location is unknown. We are not 100% uh, sure about the know-how of that particular location. So the feeling of having someone along with you uh, is something which will uh, which will be a lot of help to the travel uh, to the audience who's traveling. Apart from that, it is a very hassle-free journey which we are we have created for the end audience, wherein you can simply scan the QR code and you can book the vehicle, and the vehicle would be yours for the next 24 hours. Apart from that, tracking and security. And the most important element is that uh, there would be no carbon emission, uh, which you will be doing while commuting in the tourism side. So how does it work is that uh, we want to place the vehicles in the hotels where uh, maybe any tourist destination, let's say Goa, Manali, Kur, Gashtamudi, Munnar, any locations, the bikes would be placed right inside the hotel premise. Uh, we will establish a kiosk in which the bikes would be parked. Uh, anyone who is a audience who is staying in that particular hotel might might step out of the hotel room and simply scan the QR code and book it. It is as simple as that. Um, the the major element where the franchisee comes in in this particular model is that uh, the hotels usually do not invest on the bikes because running a hotel business or running a hospitality business is very cash flow heavy business. Uh, there is a lot of issues of cash flows uh, which happens in the hospitality industry. So no one is um, willing to invest in the bikes. So that is where the franchisee comes in. So the investment which the franchisee will do, uh, uh, we will buy electric vehicles on the, the name of the investors. So the bike would be 100% owned by the uh, franchisee who is investing. It would be registered in RTO on the name of the franchisee. And we will keep those vehicles on display in all the tourist destinations uh, in across India. So we have few tie-ups uh, about which I'll uh, discuss in the later part. Uh, in though with help of all those tie-ups, we'll be placing your vehicles in all the um, all the best locations where we can give you maximum uh, revenue, where we can give you maximum occupancy. So that is something which we have tried to capture here. Apart from that, uh, the booking process is very simple. Uh, someone who wants to book the bike can book it while booking the room. While checking in, uh, he can also, probably a hotel owner can tell him that, okay, we have a facility where you can use a vehicle for your commute. So that is something, uh, that is another touch point where the person can book it. Uh, from the room, there would be a small plug touch which would be placed. Uh, he can simply scan the QR code and he can book the bike. Or he can go to the kiosk and he can book it. So uh, why a hotel? So a lot of people have this question, like why the hotels will allow to keep the bikes? Because in a way, what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a customer loyalty and a repeat customer will come in. Because let's say if you travel to Manali, you use these bikes. Uh, at one destination, all your three basic necessities, which is breakfast, bed, and bike. So all these three basic components which are uh, required are getting resolved at one particular location. So that's why, in a way, it is a one-stop solution for all your requirements. Uh, so if that is happening, probably uh, whenever you travel, let's say after Manali or going to Goa, if you're going to Goa, probably you'll find a location where you are getting the breakfast, bed, and bike all at the same place. So that is one of the major elements. Um, in a way, we want to establish us in a way that let's say right now, a lot of people uh, select the hotel based on a lot of filters. Uh, we want to create an additional filter wherein um, people would be filtering by the availability of the bikes on rental basis. So we want to create another segment in that and that is how we want to disrupt the market. Moving ahead, uh, we have done a pilot in two locations. So that is Dalhousie and Amritsar. 
Uh, there we were very surprised to get an occupancy of 91%. So what we did is we placed 50 bikes uh, across Dalhousie. Uh, we selected Dalhousie because it is a good stimulator to all the hilly locations like Manali or Kur. So that was giving us a good stimulator for all the locations. We were very surprised to get a 91% occupancy. By 91% occupancy, what I mean is out of 30 days, the bikes which was kept there, you, on an average, we were getting 27 days occupancy. I mean, uh, the, by occupancy, I mean the bikes were utilized for 27 days, uh, were taken on rent by the end consumers for 27 days. So that is a huge achievement um, uh, for the concept validation. Like we had a concept in our mind and uh, by doing this pilot, we have got a validation to it. Then we also did a pilot in Amritsar. In Amritsar, again, we placed 50 vehicles. There we got an occupancy of 94%. By, uh, we got an occupancy of 28 days. Um, so then the question came into our mind, why we are getting such higher occupancy? Uh, we interacted with a lot of people there. And uh, what we found out is that the second best alternative which is available is let's say a three to 4,000 cab. And we are giving this bike at a price point of 500 rupees. So that is something uh, which attracted a lot of customers. And without spending anything in marketing, we were getting a lot of organic customers. Anyone who is staying in that hotel comes and takes a bike on rent. So that is something uh, in a way without spending on marketing, we can acquire a customer, which is I think one of the biggest recipe of a successful business model. Uh, without doing or spending a lot of things in marketing. If you are able to capture a good customer audience, I think this is one of the strongest USPs which any business can have. Moving ahead, uh, we also have a few government types. Uh, we had done a press release uh, saying that, okay, mm -hmm. if I go is starting something like this and um, that this press release was, let's say, a month back. It is still available in, on all public domains. You can Google it and you'll get it. Um, based on that, we got response from uh, from from basically the Andaman Nicobar uh, Island governor. So Ibaiko was invited uh, to Andaman and Nicobar. So this is our founder, uh, Dr. Rafan Khan. He's, he's with the uh, with the governor of Andaman and Nicobar Island. Um, so there, there's a biggest problem and biggest challenge of mobility because it is an island and it is not well connected. I mean, the infrastructural wise, it is poor. So some a model like Float would be very attractive and very uh, it will solve a lot of problems in that particular region. Then we also have got a tie up with uh, Goa Tourism Board, Maharashtra Tourism Board and Telangana Tourism Board. We have mentioned it as an upcoming government tie up because um, post LOI, the documentations are pending. So once the documentation is completed, we can proudly say that, okay, we have successfully tied up with them. The LOIs are already signed with all the three governments. It is just that the a few formalities here and there are pending, which should be completed, let's say, in a week or so. So now uh, moving on to the investment model, uh, we want to keep it uh, very simple, like uh, probably in the creative which you saw, you saw a minimum investment of 14 lakh rupees, but I want to further break it down to a 7 lakh model, wherein I want investors to come in at a very low price point. Let's say I want someone to start with 7 lakh rupee. Um, if just to get the confidence, once you're confident, you, you once you're confident on the product, once you're confident on the company, you can keep increasing your franchises. Let's say you start with seven lakh rupees. Um, we will allot you five bikes and it would give you a subscription of the SaaS product for, uh, let's say four years. Apart from that, the IOT devices, front end setup, kiosk, marketing support, everything would be provided to you in the seven lakh rupees. So in this seven lakh rupees, in a way, uh, we are you have created the entire package, uh, which will earn you very good returns. So what will happen is how this model works is, uh, let's say there's a bike rental of 500 rupees, which we are taking, and uh, there would be five bikes, which would be placed at one location. And it has a 10 year of four years. Um, with 70% occupancy, on an average, the monthly revenue would be around 52,500 rupees. Then there would be profit sharing in this revenue model. 60% will go to the franchisee partner who has invested on the bikes. Um, then 20% would be given to the hotel partners purely because they are giving us the customer. Uh, I think one of the biggest aspects is customer acquisition and which is being solved by the hotel partners. And plus they'll also charge the vehicles. So hotel partner gets 20%. E by go for aggregation gets 10% and a separate 10% goes to maintenance because uh, since it is a fleet business, since it is very operations heavy business, having a 10% budget for maintenance every month is very important because purely because it is a B2C model, 
the look and feel of the bike and keeping the bike in a proper shape is very important. So for that, we have kept an additional 10% in maintenance. Um, so just to give you an overall summary, if for an investment of 7 lakh rupees, at a very, very poor occupancy of 70%, you're still making around 16, 17 lakh rupees. So this is at the poorest occupancy of 70%. This is the worst case scenario because the projections which we want to make uh, are at the worst case scenarios. Um, but again, as you saw, the occupancy which we which we got at um, let's say um, let's say at Amritsar was around ninety four percent, which is twenty eight days. If we are able to achieve that sort of an occupancy, um, the the returns would somewhere be around twenty twenty one lakh rupees. So it would be a three x on your investment um, on a very uh, minimal scale, purely because of the government type. So we will be keeping all the vehicles only where uh, the government recognizes that particular hotel and where there would be a lot of customer walk-ins. So if you're able to achieve 80, 85% of occupancy, you can easily make a 3X on your investment. And it is not only about the investment, right? If you if you purely want to invest in something, um, there are a lot of options available. This is something where you get a chance to learn everything. Like this is somewhere where you would be doing uh, the business, you'll be calling all the shots uh, with all the value added inputs, which the team would be providing with to you. That there's one option of learning from it. Or someone can say that, okay, I don't want to get into... Uh, all these things, you, just, you take my money and you give me a 3x, it is our uh, job to give you the maximum returns and uh, the right. entire team would be working on. Right. So we've been featured with um, all the uh, all the big uh, models, you can Google us uh, about e-bike, about float, and all the information is available in the public domains.